that it's now 2010. So I'm approaching what? We 14 years since he died. And what? I don't know if he knew or not. But I found out. We have two minds. One of them doesn't belong to us. It doesn't function properly with our being. It, it, it basically devours the being to become more potent. Follow me on this. It thinks. It has notions, preconceived. It has judgments, it has ideas, it has screens, it has moral weirdness. It's got all kinds of sh stuff in it. It's not ours. The one we're living this life with, doing what we do, milling around, buying whatever it is we need to buy, that mind does not belong to us. And when you get to the actual mind that the being is holding so it can communicate form to form, its true uh, state is expression. Understand what I mean by this? It is used to express the being in to form. So when I look at you, David, and I decide I'm going to stop talking, and I go dead quiet in my mind, you decide you're going to go dead quiet in your mind. What starts to happen? still talking. Are you losing it? Or is it still there? Still there. Right. And I'm talking. The real mind can express, open the door to that. That's what it's for. The petty mind is the big iron door in front of that. The one that gives you so much confusion and confliction. It makes it so complicated that there's no way out. And you end up basically sacrificing yourself in insanity. Because you rage. If I'm hungry and I want to go home and I'm in the dark, eventually I'm going to rage. But if I realize it's always been the fact that I could choose has been the problem. I don't, I made the choice a long time ago. I have not made one since. I have done what's been in front of me and in me to do. I have not decided what I'm going to do. I just do what my heart puts in front of me. I do what's in my consciousness to do. I do what enters my awareness. That's what I'm supposed to do. Basically allowing my life to be flowing naturally again. Without going, no, I'm going over here and create havoc. Because as long as I don't follow that mind that is, can't be satisfied, but thinks it can actually handle satisfaction. That leads you to some really weird shit, doesn't it? You all know it. That's where psychosis is at. That's where inadequacy is. That's where lack of attention is. That's where awareness falters. That's where love is abused and destroyed. Really, taught how to be a warrior. What does a warrior do? 
Christ battle. Where's the battle? Right inside of you. Until you hit that battlefield, there is no victory. You can battle anybody you want out around you. That's not going to do you any good. It's when you realize that you know, the true perpetrator of the crime is within you. You need to either eradicate that or come to terms with it. And it's not for everyone, because there's plenty of people out there satisfied with their jet setter lifestyle. They're satisfied. That's where they're at. No judgment in that. The guy that, you know, drives the beamer, goes to work for 90 hours a week, has three kids at home that are completely freaked out and, and just cannot behave in any real sense like human beings, that have everything under the sun. He's mortgaged to the teeth. He has no actual cash. It's all credit. It's all extended out. He's way over extended. And has a wife that wants everything all the time. Right? And can do that. And never feel depressed. Never falter. Might sleep with 10, 15 prostitutes, but never falter in his... Uh, dedication to the duty. There's plenty of people that are satisfied. It's very damaging for someone who wants to go a different direction to compare themselves to that person and wonder why they've got it so good and I've got it so bad. No, they've got it so fake and you're dealing with what's them, it's everything. But you realize, well, maybe I'm not there. See, I lived in Southern California. They mentioned a place called Mission Viejo. It is posh. There is, you will never find an old car there. They are all BMWs, Mercedes <coughs> Benz, Porsches, top of the line. They're all brand spanking new. They're all shiny, and all the people in them are shiny, too. Shiny, shiny, shiny. And it's very funny. You pull up at a stoplight in a 79 Pinto, and you look over, and you see what the reality is. It's all about comparison. They live vicariously through comparing themselves to someone else, and are they higher on the ladder than that person? And then the whole competition starts. To have a genuine conversation there is nearly impossible. To have any heart-to-heart -heart with someone there is nearly impossible. What you are seeing is a character who has a script and has been built up. None of it's real. None of it has anything to do with the life. And that's just what a lot of people like to do. There's no problem with that. Let them do it. Leave them alone. If it's not for you, it's not for you. Because, you know, they're, then you got the other people who are not satisfied with that. Who are just completely disgusted by even pursuing something like that. Are they wrong? Are they bums? Are they not worthy? Are they what? Just, just big dampers on our society? No. Not at all. They're the ones that are looking beyond that, sensing more to this life. That it's much larger than we first anticipated. And they start to see that. They start to feel it's much more than we know. The minute you see that, yeah, the new Beamer ain't so it's a big deal anymore. It seems, it, after a while, it's like, why bother having that? 